I told my dad's girlfriend she's not my mom at my graduation, and now he's chosen her over me. Months later, I'm living with my grandparents and starting a new life without them. I, 18F, just graduated high school last week, and what should have been a happy occasion turned into a complete disaster. To understand why, I need to give some background. My mom passed away when I was 10 from breast cancer. She fought hard for two years, but in the end, it wasn't enough. Losing her devastated me and my dad, 45 by Melm. We were incredibly close. She was my best friend, my confidant, my everything. She taught me to bake, helped me with my homework, and always knew how to make me laugh when I was sad. Losing her left a huge void in my life. For the first couple years after mom died, it was just dad and me trying to figure things out. Dad threw himself into work to cope, often pulling 12-hour days at the office. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, mom's parents, who live nearby. They were grieving too, but they did their best to be there for me. When I was 13, dad started dating Abigail, 40F. At first, I was cautiously optimistic. I wanted dad to be happy, and I knew mom would have wanted that too. But things moved really fast. Within six months, Abigail had moved in with us. She tried hard to be my new mom right away. She was always hugging me, trying to have girl talks and calling me pet names like sweetie and honey. It made me really uncomfortable because I wasn't ready for that kind of relationship. I missed my mom terribly and felt like Abigail was trying to replace her. Abigail wanted to redecorate the house, including my mom's art studio that dad had left untouched. She tried to get rid of some of mom's clothes that I'd kept. She even suggested we get a new family photo taken to hang over the fireplace where our last photo with mom was. I tried talking to dad about how I was feeling, but he just said I needed to give Abigail a chance. He said she made him happy and that we should be a family. I felt like my feelings didn't matter. Abigail kept pushing to be close with me even when I made it clear I wanted space. She'd come into my room without knocking, go through my stuff, and try to give me unsolicited advice about friends and boys. One time she found my diary and read it. I was furious and told dad, but he just said Abigail was trying to understand me better. I felt so violated and like I had no privacy in my own home. When I was 15, Abigail got pregnant. Dad was thrilled, but I felt even more pushed aside. They turned my playroom, the room where mom and I used to do art projects together, into a nursery without even asking me. Abigail kept saying how excited she was for me to be a big sister, but I didn't want that. I felt like they were replacing me and my mom with their new family. My half-brother Jake was born right before I turned 16. Dad and Abigail were so focused on the baby that I felt invisible. Abigail would snap at me if I made noise while Jake was napping. She'd cancel plans with me last minute to do things with Jake. Dad barely paid attention to me anymore. I started acting out, staying out late, hanging with a rougher crowd, letting my grades slip. I thought maybe if I caused problems, they'd notice me again. But Abigail just got angrier with me and dad seemed disappointed. Neither of them tried to figure out why I was struggling. One night, I snuck out to a party and got drunk for the first time. I called my best friend Lily to pick me up because I was scared to go home. Lily told her mom, who called my dad. When I got home, Abigail was waiting up and laid into me. She grounded me for a month and said she was disappointed in my choices. I yelled at her that she wasn't my mom and couldn't tell me what to do. Dad took Abigail's side and extended my grounding to two months. After that, things were tense at home. I retreated into myself, spending as much time as possible in my room or at my grandparents' house. Dad tried to talk to me a few times, but it always turned into a lecture about giving Abigail a chance and being a good big sister to Jake. I felt like he didn't care about my feelings at all. For the past couple years, I've basically been counting down the days until I could move out for college. I barely speak to Abigail, and my relationship with Dad is strained. They're always fawning over Jake while I feel like an outsider in my own home. My high school graduation was last Friday. I was excited to celebrate with my grandparents and a few close friends. Dad and Abigail came too, with Jake. During the ceremony, I could hear Jake fussing. It brought back memories of my own graduation from elementary school where Mom was too sick to attend. I fought back tears, thinking about how much I wished she could be there to see me graduate high school. Afterwards, when I went to find my family, Abigail rushed up and hugged me tight. She was crying and saying how proud she was of her baby girl. I don't know what came over me, but I just snapped. I pushed her away and said, I'm not your baby girl, you're not my mom. Stop pretending we're one big happy family. Abigail looked shocked and hurt. Dad got angry and told me I was being disrespectful. I yelled back that they've been disrespecting me for years by ignoring my feelings. I said some hurtful things about how they replaced me and my mom. I told Abigail she'd never be my mom and that I couldn't wait to leave for college and get away from them. 
Abigail started sobbing and dad told me to apologize. I refused and stormed off. My grandparents found me later and calmed me down. They said they understood why I was upset, but that I shouldn't have caused a scene. Dad and Abigail left without saying goodbye. It's been a few days now. Dad keeps calling and texting, telling me I need to apologize to Abigail. He says I really hurt her feelings and ruined a special day. He says Abigail has only ever tried to be there for me and that I'm being ungrateful. Part of me feels bad for losing my cool, but another part feels like this was a long time coming. I feel like I've been bottling up these feelings for years and they all came out at once. I know I probably could have handled it better, but I'm tired of pretending everything is okay when it's not. Eita for finally telling Abigail she's not my mom? Should I apologize or stand my ground? Update. One, it's been about two weeks since my graduation blow up with Abigail and my dad. A lot has happened, so I wanted to give an update. After I posted, I took some time to really think about everything. Reading the comments helped me realize that while my feelings were valid, I could have handled things better. I decided to reach out to my dad to try to have a calm conversation. I called him and asked if we could meet up, just the two of us. He agreed, so we met at a coffee shop near our house. At first, it was really tense and awkward. My dad started by saying again that I needed to apologize to Abigail. I told him I wasn't ready to do that yet, but that I did want to explain where I was coming from. I opened up to my dad about how I've been feeling these past five years. Pushed aside, replaced, ignored. I told him how much I missed my mom and how hard it was to see Abigail try to step into that role. I explained that while I understood he was happy with Abigail, I felt like my grief and feelings were never acknowledged. I brought up specific instances that had hurt me over the years like the time Abigail redecorated mom's art studio without asking me, or when they missed my piano recital because Jake had a cold. I told him how it felt when he took Abigail's side during arguments, like he was choosing her over me. To my surprise, my dad actually listened. He got teary-eyed and admitted that he'd messed up. He said after my mom died, he was so afraid of being a single dad that he rushed into things with Abigail. He thought giving me a new mom would fix everything, but he realized now that he should have been more sensitive to my needs. Dad opened up about his own grief over losing mom. He said he threw himself into work and then into his relationship with Abigail because he didn't know how to deal with the pain. He apologized for not being there for me more and for not acknowledging how hard things were for me too. We talked for over two hours. My dad apologized for not being there for me more after Jake was born. He said he got caught up in having a baby again and lost sight of the fact that I still needed him too. He promised to make more of an effort to spend one-on-one -on -one time with me going forward. I felt like a huge weight had been lifted after our talk. For the first time in years, I felt like my dad really heard me. We agreed that we both needed to work on our relationship, but that we wanted to try. As for Abigail, that's more complicated. My dad asked if I'd be willing to sit down with both of them to clear the air. I said I'd think about it, but that I wasn't ready yet. I told him I know Abigail cares about me in her own way, but that I'm not comfortable with her trying to be my mom. He said he'd talk to her about respecting my boundaries more. After our talk, I went to visit my mom's grave. I hadn't been there in a, well, because it was too painful. I sat there for a long time, telling her about graduation and how much I missed her. It was hard, but it also felt good to connect with her memory again. The next day, I got a text from Abigail. She apologized for pushing too hard and said she never meant to try to replace my mom. She asked if we could talk when I was ready. I haven't responded yet. I'm still processing everything. I'm still not sure how I feel about Abigail. Part of me appreciates that she's trying, but another part still resents her for how things have been these past few years. I know it's not entirely her fault, but it's hard to let go of those feelings. I'm still processing everything, but I do feel cautiously optimistic. My dad and I have plans to grab dinner, just us next week. I'm nervous, but looking forward to rebuilding our relationship. I'm not sure what the future holds with Abigail, but I'm going to take things one day at a time. I know we have a long way to go, but for the first time in years, I feel like maybe things can get better. Thanks to everyone who offered advice and support. It really helped me find the courage to open up to my dad. I'll update again if anything significant happens. Update two. It's been about a month since my last update, and unfortunately things have taken a turn for the worse. My dad and I had been making progress on rebuilding our relationship. We'd had a few good talks and even went fishing together like we used to when I was little. But last week, everything fell apart again. My dad invited me over for dinner, saying he wanted to celebrate my graduation properly as a family. I was hesitant, but agreed to go. When I got there, I realized it was a setup. Abigail was there with a cake and balloons, acting like nothing had happened. 
I tried to stay calm, but Abigail kept pushing. She gave me a gift, a necklace that said daughter on it. When I didn't react enthusiastically, she got teary-eyed and said she just wanted us to move past the misunderstanding at graduation. I lost it. I told her it wasn't a misunderstanding. I meant what I said. I said I appreciated that she cared about me, but that she needed to stop trying to force a mother-daughter relationship. I told her I already had a mom, and even though she was gone, Abigail would never replace her. Abigail started crying, and my dad got angry. He said I was being cruel and ungrateful. He brought up how Abigail had been there for me all these years. I shot back that she'd been there because he let her move in and take over without considering my feelings. Things escalated quickly. Dad accused me of never giving Abigail a chance. I told him he never gave me a chance to grieve my mom properly before pushing Abigail on me. Abigail tried to intervene, saying she just wanted us all to be happy. I snapped at her, saying my happiness never seemed to matter as long as she got the perfect family she wanted. Dad brought up all the times Abigail had helped me with homework or driven me to activities. I countered with all the times she'd invaded my privacy or dismissed my feelings. We went back and forth, dredging up years of hurt and resentment on both sides. At one point, Jake started crying from all the yelling. Abigail went to check on him, and when she came back, she told me I was upsetting my brother. Something in me snapped when she said, my brother. I yelled that Jake wasn't my brother. He was their replacement child. As soon as I said it, I regretted it. Jake's just a little kid. He didn't do anything wrong. But in that moment, all the pain and anger I'd been holding onto came pouring out. Dad lost it then. He said I was acting like a spoiled brat and that he'd had enough of my attitude. He told me that until I could grow up and appreciate my family, I wasn't welcome in their home. I left in tears. I drove around for hours, not sure where to go. I ended up at my grandparents' house. They let me stay the night and tried to comfort me, but I was too upset to really talk about what happened. The next day, I got a long text from my dad. He said he was disappointed in me and that I'd really hurt Abigail. He said he thought we'd been making progress, but now he sees I'm not ready to move forward. He said I needed to do some serious thinking about my behavior, and that until I was ready to apologize and make an effort with Abigail and Jake, it was best if we had some space. I'm devastated. I really thought my dad and I were making progress, but now I see he'll always choose Abigail over me. I don't know where to go from here. I'm supposed to start college in the fall, but now I'm not sure how I'll manage without my dad's support. I feel so alone and angry. Part of me wants to apologize just to smooth things over, but another part feels like I need to stand my ground. I don't know what to do. I've been staying with my grandparents for the past few days. They're trying to be supportive, but I can tell they think I should apologize too. They keep saying family is important and that I should try to make things work but I don't feel like Abigail and Jake are my family. My family was my mom and dad, and that's gone now. I don't know how to move forward from here or what to do next. I feel lost and alone. Update three. It's been two months since my last update. A lot has changed, so I wanted to fill everyone in. After the blow up with my dad and Abigail, I was in a really dark place. I felt completely alone and unsure of my future. But my grandparents stepped up in a big way. They offered to let me live with them and said they'd help me figure out college finances. I moved in with them about six weeks ago. It's been an adjustment, but overall, it's been really good for me. My grandma and I have gotten especially close. She's been helping me work through my grief over my mom in a way I was never able to before. We look through old photo albums together, and she tells me stories about my mom that I'd never heard before. It hurts sometimes, but it also feels good to connect with my mom's memory. My grandpa has been teaching me how to do basic car maintenance. It's something my dad and I used to do together, so it was bittersweet at first. But it's become a nice bonding activity for me and grandpa. Living with my grandparents has made me realize how much I missed having a stable, loving home environment. They don't try to force anything. They just let me be and offer support when I need it. It's a stark contrast to how things were with dad and Abigail. As for my dad, we still aren't really speaking. He's called a few times, but the conversations are always short and tense. He keeps pushing me to apologize to Abigail, but I'm not ready to do that. I've realized I don't owe Abigail a relationship just because she's with my dad. I did send Jake a birthday card last month. Whatever issues I have with dad and Abigail, I know none of it is Jake's fault. I don't know if I'll ever feel like he's truly my brother, but I don't want to punish him for the mistakes of our parents. I've decided to go ahead with my college plans. My grandparents are helping me apply for loans and scholarships. It'll be tight financially, but I'm determined to make it work. I'm actually excited about having a fresh start away from all the drama. My best friend Lily has been amazing through all of this. She comes over almost every day and has been helping me pack for college. 
We're planning one last road trip before summer ends. It feels good to have something fun to look forward to. Looking back, I can see that the issues with my dad and Abigail had been building for years. While I regret some of the things I said, I don't regret finally standing up for myself. I deserve to have my feelings respected. I'm not sure what the future holds for my relationship with my dad. Part of me hopes we can eventually rebuild things, but I know it'll take time and effort on both sides. For now, I'm focusing on healing and moving forward with my life. Thank you to everyone who's offered support and advice throughout this journey. It's meant more than you know. I still have days where I feel angry or sad about everything that's happened. Sometimes I miss my dad and our relationship before Abigail came into the picture. Other times I'm relieved to be away from all the tension and expectations. My grandparents have suggested I try therapy to work through some of these feelings. I'm considering it, but I'm not sure I'm ready to open up to a stranger just yet. For now, I'm taking things one day at a time. As I prepare to start this new chapter of my life at college, I'm trying to focus on the positives. I have a chance to figure out who I am outside of all the family drama. I'm nervous, but also excited about what the future might hold. I don't know if I'll post any more updates. I think it's time for me to step away from rehashing all of this and just focus on moving forward. But I wanted to let everyone know where things stand now. Again, thank you all for your support and advice. It's helped me more than I can express.